Welcome back to the channel guys. I've got a little project here I want to get started. My son has painted his bedroom. He uh, did the ceilings, did the walls, he masked around all the custom woodwork. Um, still has his tape on, hasn't even put his covers on his outlet yet. But he's a busy boy and he's still in school so he doesn't have a lot of time. But yesterday he removed the carpeting we got some uh little fine dust here from the carpet pad uh this needs vacuuming cleaning up we need to move some objects and uh what he wanted to do was put down carpet tiles uh the old carpet was a maroon really ugly it was in here when we bought the house but i want to help him do this floor or at least get him started and I think it's going to be a fairly nice project to do. So follow along here and uh, let me get some objects out of here and we'll get started. Okay, well what he chose was a Nexus carpet tile and the color I believe is I know it's a gray but I don't know the name they call it charcoal possibly these are self stick tiles it's Amazon's choice um, they had good ratings I'm not I, I don't care I, I wanted him to pick what he wanted he does not want a pad he didn't like his squishy carpet any of his items like his desk and dresser whatever and bed left little impressions in it and he wanted something with no padding so we were thinking about doing hardwood quite expensive so we chose the uh, tiles instead when I mentioned self stick and he can do them that he was really interested he ran the vacuum around what he could he already removed the uh, tack strips they're standing here. I wish he took them out. I got to take these out of here. Um, this house has custom trim. It's beveled on the edges. Um, it looks really nice. We're not going to undercut anything. We're going to butt the carpet to the trim. The uh, baseboard goes all the way to the floor. So that's great. There's no gap. A lot of times it's up elevated. You tuck your carpet down under. If you're going to do hardwood, you throw a quarter round in front of it this case we don't have to do anything his closet doors he removed uh, the closets are cedar lined not all of them but some of it and uh, it really looks good I think these carpet tiles will look good in there um, they're self stick tiles and they say they stay down well I know I always worry about that so what I want to do is I want to go across the floor and check for any nails that are popping up along the seams whatever and this is three quarter inch tongue and groove plywood it's on two by ten y hauser southern yellow pine floor joist 16 on center it's a very solid rugged house um the floor is nice and level surprising no not really but it's it's really level and um and strong the only issue I see in this room is there are the okay I got everything cleaned all the way around to here I double checked to see if Dawson got all the carpet tack strip nails and staples there was a few left and uh, what I've noticed over the years if you go and take your hammer or a flat bar and just rub it across the floor you might have saw me doing that you can usually hear a nail and then tap it down and um, I went out underneath that threshold because I want the carpet to stop under the door. I think if we do carpet in the hallway, we're going to be changing it to a tan. And um, it has to seem under the door. It can't be inside or outside. Okay, as you see or saw, I went around the whole room again except for where this little hutch is i see he's got a balloon stuck to the baseboard that comes off i'll get a little cleaner 
or he can when he takes his tape off. He's still got to take off his painter's tape. I measured this side of the room, this side of the room, you know, the four corners. I snapped a line. We're checking it for square. It's out of square one quarter of an inch. The long ways is exactly the same dimension. This corner of the closet is almost one quarter of an inch in. So that is super square. The other thing is, if you noticed, when I snapped my line, I pushed the string all the way to the floor, went to the other side, both directions, pull it really taut. And if you saw that, the string was laying on the floor. That's quite rare on a lot of my projects. A lot of times there's a sag, and uh, you know, sometimes an inch and a half. I think a couple houses, I had like four inches over a 20 foot run. And um, this actually touched in the center, which, like I said, this has a Weyhauser brand, uh, Southern Yellow Pine floor joists. You can see them in the basement. There's beams up above, and there's um, steel I-beams in the garage, the main section, nine-foot ceilings, and, you know, a structurally sound house. I'm quite pleased with that. This is the first time I ever checked it to see if it's level, and I'm real happy with that. I went around and checked for staples, nails. I hit a few nails, just rubbing with a hammer, tap them down. You don't want them up. I'm not sure what type of nails they use. I use ring shank. I don't know what they did. Um, and then, you know, probably nothing under a carpet, but always get your nails down. Check for square. I think because this hutch weighs a ton, I'm trying to figure out where I want to start. If I start coming into the room, um, I need the furniture on this side. I think he's going to keep the placements about the same but it's very heavy.
All right, what I decided to do, instead of using bags that are gonna rip, spray these again, keep them wet, you know? If you don't know what you're working on, just take precaution. 1983, I'm hoping asbestos would have been gone, but who knows. So I'm gonna throw on a cheap pair of gloves. I'm gonna set them in this bucket and then I can just carry it outside a lot easier than I'm putting a bag and have the bag rip and deal with all these bags. So hopefully they just lift right out of here. There they are. They're almost a two by eight by eight. You should be able to get two or three in that bucket. Now I'll carry them down, set them outside, which should be fine. I'll go through a lot of soap. So I'll keep doing the process. No, I'm all out of breath. 16 bricks, I think they weigh about 16 pounds a piece. And on this side, it's got those same, um, I don't know what you call them, those end stops. So probably I'll leave them there on with these burners. I think I'll just wet this again. And I'm going to just throw the covers back on and get it out of here. Just keep your, if you don't know what the product is, just keep it moist. And let's see what it weighs now. Look at that. So that's going to be easy to get it out of here. Boy, that thing, 362 pounds. So I'll put the same screws back in. Put screws in and get this unit out of here, get everything cleaned up, mop this floor, make sure there's no dust anywhere. All right, I'm sharpening my pencil. I got my, my chalk lines crisscross center to center. I brought in my Swanson eight foot straight edge. Uh, the chalk line you walk on, it disappears. So I want to put a permanent line with a pencil. And then when I, I think I'm going to use a pressure, pressure sensitive adhesive and you put it on thin, I might roll it on. We got the squirrel helping us. Say hi, squirrel, up here. And uh, he's checking things out. But I, um, I want to be able to see my line through that. I want to start square. And normally you start, start from the center and work your way out. And I'm going to work backwards so that I can put the adhesive on and then work into the adhesive so I don't get all into it. And usually run your pattern you know crossed and back but I'll probably go this way and that way and then um, I might shift my line by a half an inch this way because I would like a full tile to run out of the room but just so you're straight on your square line so I'll probably put it on time lapse that's what I think I'm going to approach here um, 
I worked on a heater yesterday. I haven't got a new heater yet, so that's not going to hold up progress. I'll just continue with the floor. And I want to get this bedroom back in order. Okay, looking good so far. The pattern that Dawson picked, I don't know if you can pick it up there, is one grain going this way opposite, so it's a 90 degree all the way around. Otherwise, you could run the grain the same way, but he chose that. So when you're looking at the finished carpet when it's done, it should show lights and darks. I opened up four boxes and I'm gonna mix and match just like you would do wallpaper, roof shingles, uh, laminate flooring. Just mix them up so you don't get, for example, a lot that might be slightly larger or slightly lighter. And um, should look pretty good. My um, adhesive tacked over, went clear. And when you place your tiles, make sure you can see your line and try to stay so you can see your line. And uh, you can pull these tiles up. So just, but be careful that you get them lined up nice. And then uh, I've got my 75 to 100 pound roller over there. When I'm done, I think I'll just roll this section and then we'll move around and we'll either continue across that way or come out the room, one or the other, so we don't have to move furniture too much. Looking good. Okay guys, as you saw, I did my directions. I did the 90 degree, placed them in. They didn't take too long. I think this took about a half an hour. I'm sure the next quarter will take less time, even though I got a cut in the closet. But I think I'm gonna shoot right down through the back. I wanna leave some for Dawson to do. He started a video on it, and then of course it led to other repairs in here, but um, you get a little difference in color. I worked out of four different boxes at a time. I do like this pattern, light, dark, light, dark, but once you get your furniture in here, your bed in here, all this, there's not a lot of floor space left, even though it's a big room. So I'll run the vacuum again. I'm gonna go ahead and put my adhesive down. I got the ceiling pan on here. That'll probably dry 20 minutes, half hour. Then I'll finish the tiles running that direction. And uh, the room is pretty square. There's a little wave in this wall in the center, a little wave in this wall going out. But overall, when you go to cut these, my only little complaint on these is the paper backing sometimes comes off a little too easy. And if it moves over just a little bit, when you go to measure, you, you don't, you're not cutting on your mark. So if you saw I had a couple of them that didn't look right, they were like, you know, a 16th gap against the wall. So I just was able to move it down and reuse them. So no waste at all. And I think I ended up cutting off approximately a half an inch. So. Pretty happy so far. Um, first time I've used tiles. I prefer to use a larger tile, but this is what Dawson picked out. His room, his way. It looks a little blue today, but the color is charcoal. So I think it's with the sun, which is uh, approximately eight, nine degrees out. It's pretty cold. It's a good day to work indoors. Um, and the sun's out, I think it reflects and gives you a difference in color, but I think you did good. Having the gray with the gray blue paint with the uh, like golden oak trim color, I think it's gonna look pretty sharp when he's done. So I'll probably just uh, time lapse the rest of it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, when you put these tiles down without any adhesive, they stick well. But I was worried, you know, how long are they going to stay down? Do they pop up like some tiles do? So I used the uh, uh, pressure sensitive release adhesive. And uh, you're supposed to take it up without tearing half the floor up with it, you know. So pretty happy, guys. Hope you like it. Time for my um, hazelnut coffee now. I left it in the windowsill and I couldn't reach it after I glued Okay, I got all the full tiles down. We've got 25% of the room done here. We got another almost 20% there. Now I got a cut. 
I don't want to place in full tiles and back into it. So I'm going to stay to the right and come around and uh, going to get very little waste. I think this is going to look great. I'm falling right on my square line. Um, some of the tiles are uh, just a shade difference in color, which looks fine. And I think because the pattern goes into 90, you get that light dark, light dark anyway. I think it looks great. So back to the cutting. Okay, guys, that sun feels good coming in the window. Remember, it was like 8 or 10 degrees outside. So I got all the way into the closet. Shadows here probably don't help. Um, what I found is some of the tiles, the uh, backing is super sticky and some is just tacky. So I'm kind of glad that uh, I used that release adhesive. So these babies are going to stay down. You uh, know I still have to roll this in, but the room is officially halfway done. We should be able to move furniture over to this side tonight. And um, that should take about two hours, three hours tomorrow to finish that up. Unless Dawson gets here and he wants to do some tonight. I'd like him to do some to see how, you know, how much is involved. It's, it's measuring, it's good measuring and um, good cutting. So you want it right tight to the baseboard. There's no cord around in here. The baseboard goes all the way to the floor. So I wanted a neat look. I, I didn't want to undercut anything. Um, but that looks really sharp, guys, and I made sure that my pattern stayed to 90 degree around. So, that really looks good. I'm just going to start cleaning up the mess here, run the roller over it, maybe the vacuum quick to get any loose fibers. And, uh, yeah, half the room is done. Over here we've got another closet, and he's got his clothes and things in that one, so we might have to shift some things around, but... Um, Moving this hutch is a big deal. I want to get that off from there tonight and move it over. So he'll have to pull his tape off. Probably right in here I think is where his hutch is going to go. So just get that tape off in there and then we'll run the vacuum. So hey, this is looking good. I'll clean up and uh, see if he likes it when he gets home from school.
All right, here we go. We got all the tiles in. There's a little color variance in some, so that's why you want to do uh, three or four boxes at the same time. I did, you know, you saw me doing the adhesive. I did the slow release or the releasable map bay adhesive. It dries in about 20 minutes with a ceiling fan on. We did the 90 degrees so that the green in the tile goes boop, 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 boop. and it, that's the pattern that Dawson wanted. Check out his channel. He uh, has this bedroom project on there. He wanted to mask it off and clean it and he wants to install a couple goodies up on the wall. Get his room all hip here. And he hated the red carpet that was in here. It's almost a burgundy. I hated it too, but it wasn't my room. He wanted more of a boy's room. Probably was a girl's room originally. And uh, I don't know, this turned out pretty good, guys. I can't get up totally close to the wall, but if you saw it, in the time lapse, what I found is a little, um, I don't know what you call it, hat, is to take the, uh, the aluminum framing square and uh, just press that against the edge of the baseboard and it really pushes the tile down into glue. Now we just got to run the carpet or the vacuum in here on the carpet. And, He's got to take his painter's tape off and start putting his, he's got a king size bed, get that down. He's going to move things around a little bit, set up his little YouTube studio office and uh, this old toy box, I don't know, I made that when he was going to be one year old. He's had that long time, I don't see any scratches on it. I don't know if he's going to use it for storage. I don't know, I was. Maybe we ought to put a, a, uh, I don't know, maybe a large pillow on there, like a four foot pillow. And he could use that in his building for storage and a, uh, you know, a sit down chair would be nice. And uh, I don't know, what do you think? Leave me a comment down there. Remember to like and subscribe if you learned anything. Tell me what I did wrong on this, you know. There's some guys out there that are really good. I just try to measure well, do it as fast and keep it as economical as possible. And uh, we got these on Amazon. Dawson picked it out. It's a smoke gray color. Almost looks blue. Probably because of the blue wall in here. But it's really gray. And uh, I don't know, it looks pretty sharp. He picked it, got it on Amazon. Just over a buck a square foot most economical floor we could come up with. I didn't want a cheap laminate. I said either hardwood or carpet. And he chose carpet tiles. So I really like the pattern that you see right here. It looks pretty cool. I told me I ought to put these down in this workshop building out there and do a checkerboard pattern. It'd be pretty cool. Different color. So thanks for watching. And we'll see you on the next project, guys. We just got to clean up and get out of here. Time to go do another project.